Okay, I think we are about, it's 12 o'clock straight up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this um, training. And I have shut down all of my social media and all of my online um, interactions so that um, we have the best bandwidth for the training. So if you are trying to get a hold of me, uh, then I apologize. I definitely will be able to see as you jump on here. Um, but uh, hopefully, and we'll probably have some people who will come on and join us throughout. Um, as you know, this was kind of a last minute um, notification that we were doing the training. And the reason is, for those of you who know, and um, just in, in honor of my mom real quick and the crazy month. So my plan was to uh, unveil, I guess, to, to gift the Living Well Lifestyle Daily Playbook. Here it is. Um, it has a shiny cover, so it kind of reflects in the light. But um, I wanted to get this out in the month of December so that people had it in January. Well, um, I came back from a training the first week of December uh, the day and a half later, my mom had a massive stroke and I was at her bedside for um, four days and nights while she passed. And then my following week was spent in funeral preparations. So, um, and, and then the next day after her burial, we had a family emergency, um, which resulted in another night at the ER and um, not getting anything done. And then the next day was Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. and and, and one thing leads to another, right? And so um, my December literally is a blur. Uh, it, was, it was crazy. And so uh, as I came out of Christmas and I actually got kind of sick um, after having so much non-sleep and trauma through the month um, that I actually got bronchitis, but I've been able to kick it pretty quickly. I think this is my record quickest I've ever been able to go from thriving to surviving to thriving back again. And that's a testament to um, this, this process, okay? So um, that gives you a little bit of a background um, as to why I, I, um, I'm still really committed to getting it out and I'm recording this so that we can do the training ongoing. So you may not be seeing this until you know, you're exposed to it, I don't know when. Um, but I'm doing the training and I'm recording it so that when you do get your hands on this gift, um, you can implement it to maximize your daily choices, okay? Um, so the purpose of the actual uh, publication is um, to be a tool that was developed for you to implement the structure and the intention into your daily routines and to set and restore your entire being every single day. Okay, that's why that's the purpose that I have um, put in the front of the manual. And um, to give you a little bit of background, again, depending on when you're watching this training and how much you know about Callie Ray, um, my, my journey came from, uh, I'm a product of the sad lifestyle. Um, I refer to the sad lifestyle, that's the standard American diet and lifestyle. And uh, I absolutely, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest here in Idaho and had a pretty typical upbringing and uh, went to college and got my master's degree in speech language pathology. And it was actually shortly after I um, got my master's degree that I had my first um, signs, my first symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis and was diagnosed at age 25. And that um, diagnosis really, I mean, I was young and that was shocking to me, but uh, it really, it ran in my family. My mom and my grandma both had it. And so I wasn't, you know, I just, it didn't slow me down. It didn't stop me. I did um, try a variety of different um, methods, medications and therapies and doctors and supplements to try to uh, manage my rheumatoid arthritis. Um, but pretty much it helped a little bit and I just progressed. I just continued to live my life. Um, I progressed up the, the corporate ladder. It's not really the corporate ladder, but it, it really is actually in healthcare and um, actually owned my own private practice at the time that I uh, was turning 40 and realized, wow, 
I really, um, I was 200 pounds, which I'm, I'm, you can't really tell on this video, but I'm only 5'1", uh, and so 200 pounds is a lot of weight on my little frame. And uh, I, I had a family that had a lot of health um, crises, early death, and um, pretty bad diagnoses. And so I knew that my life was either going to be short or it was going to have a poor quality. And so I knew I needed to do something. And, and I was exposed to um, a product, which is produce in a capsule and uh, powdered produce. And it, it really changed my life in that I learned about nutritional healing. And that nutritional healing just led me to search out and find out why these little um, capsules of produce, just straight up food, was able to do what no doctor, no um, prescription, no therapy, no supplement had done for me. And it basically eliminated all of my pain from my rheumatoid arthritis. So then fast forward a few years, I am completely immersed in nutritional healing. I have my diet dialed in. I really am um, eating plant-based, whole food, clean. Um, I had eliminated all the processed um, foods out of my diet. I had eliminated most inflammatory foods and I was really feeling like a million bucks. Uh, but I had some uh, more medical complications and come to find out, long story short, I was diagnosed with um, systemic lupus erythematosus and oral lichen planus. And those are two um, autoimmune diseases. Now at that time, um, I, I felt better than I had ever felt in my adult life. I had actually lost 70 pounds. Uh, so I was down to a, a better weight and I had energy. I was working out in the gym. I really felt amazing and I hadn't felt that kind of energy and, um, and vigor in life since, since I was 16. I mean, it really went way, way, way back. And so when, when the doctor told me I had these diagnoses, I really was perplexed. Um, and I dove into the research and I realized that I now had a name for it, but I'd actually had these diseases for a really long time. Well, the lupus, the oral, the lichen planus was new to me, but the um, lupus I'd had uh, I can go back to about 99, 2000, right there that winter was when I had my first, um, my first flare that I can go, oh, that was not what we treated. That was lupus. And um, so from there, um, I, I realized that I'd had this for 11 years. So it was just a name, but I was healing and I just, I could feel that I was healing. And so I really took um, you know, the doctor gave me the litany of medications and therapies that I needed to do for my lupus. And, and I just, I couldn't do it. I just said, no, thank you. <laughs> um, these drugs are toxic and I know that my body is healing. And so I looked and went, okay, I've got my nutrition dialed in, but there's clearly something else in addition to the nutrition. The nutrition had gotten me to where I hadn't felt so good in so long, but I still, uh, I was still experiencing flares from my autoimmune diseases. And so um, that's what led me uh, that I really dialed in the lifestyle. I really looked at it and said, okay, there's more to the healing than just the nutrition. Nutrition is foundation, it's key, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, but there's more. And um, so I, I really started dissecting my lifestyle. I started dissecting when stress happens, what happens? When, um, what are the triggers that are triggering me? Are they environmental? Is it toxins? Is it emotional? Is it um, work? Is it family? Is it, what I'm, it's what the thoughts in my mind, um, all of these things. And so over a period of time, I was able to identify um, really key factors in our lifestyle that, that make or break us really. And, and at the time I was doing it for me, this was, I was my own laboratory and I was just figuring it out. But what happened um, about eight years into it. So 2000, well, about 2015, I started thinking, you know, other people would benefit from this information. And so I started writing about it. 
And then in uh, 2017, I decided it was time. I really felt like I had reached my transformation, my autoimmune diseases. Uh, by this time, uh, they had decided that rheumatoid arthritis is not a degenerative disease as I was taught um, and as I was diagnosed, but it's actually an autoimmune. So I have three autoimmune diseases and they were in check. I didn't have pain. I didn't have, um, I might get some stiffness um, and I might have you know, a, little, a little flare here and there, but I finally felt like I had transformed and I had my lifestyle, my nutrition, um, all dialed in so that I could really um, manage my disease. And that was a long process and this is not the place where I'm just giving you the backstory. Um, but that led to me realizing that, you know, when I got those diagnoses and I went online and I searched, um, cause I really thought that they were crazy. I didn't have that. Uh, because everything in my medical experience, people I knew, um, as well as um, what I was finding on the internet was all very, very uh, negative, very, very um, hopeless. And so I really felt like I needed to get my story out so that people knew that there is hope, that you can feel amazing and you can have great energy and you can you can have autoimmune diseases and you can reverse them. I can tell you I haven't cured them, but I can also tell you I just had the most amazing challenge to my system in December um, because any one of the events that happened from a week in a training to the passing of my mom to no sleep because I was at her bedside in a nursing home for four days, there's that's not sleep. <laughs> I had that fatigue that you have as a new mom when you've got to get up and nurse the baby every two hours and there's no schedule and you've just given birth, you're exhausted. My body went through that. Then I had a trauma with my granddaughter being mauled by a dog in front of me and um, I passed out, <laughs> had a vasovagal response. Um, my kids, and they had to call two ambulances, one for my granddaughter and one for me. Um, and then the, the holidays, I mean, it was super, super traumatic, super, super emotional, adrenaline and up and down. And, and I've burned out my, adre my adrenals from years and years of chronic stress. And less than a week later, I've bounced back. I'm 100%. That's unheard of in my world. That's unheard of in my world. This would have had me down for months and months and months in bed, fatigue, pain, triggered every single flare that could have possibly been in my body. So I know this works. And so I wrote the book, uh, Eight Lessons Lupus Taught Me from Surviving to Thriving with Autoimmune Diseases, to give that hope to people who were surviving, who were in that place that I was in, chronic pain, deep fatigue, hopelessness, just feeling like this is what I've, this is what my life has, been broken down to. This is what the rest of my life is going to look like, medications, therapies, and feeling like crap all the time. And so that wasn't my experience. My experience was vitality and thriving and feeling better than I have ever felt with autoimmune diseases. So it's counter to what most people are experiencing. So I wanted to get my message out. So I wrote the book. And of course, um, what I'm learning is you can't write a book and not talk about it because people don't know your story. They don't know who Callie Ray is. And so I've gotten a little more bold and reached out and said, hey, this is my story. And so I do um, a presentation, it's called Change Your Story. And so it empowers people to understand how these choices can improve their life. So what happened, you know, this was, I was really looking at the, um, the autoimmune community to reach out and give it a, a hope. That's where it started. And then I found that uh, the more I talked to people and the more presentations I did, the more books people read, they would come back to me and say, you know, this is really great information, but you don't have to have autoimmune diseases to benefit from this. I know a lot of people who are suffering, people who are just going through autopilot and surviving and don't have autoimmune diseases. You need to get this message out to a bigger audience. Uh, okay. <laughs> and so that's what led me. Um, to, he, to this today. So I started realizing, okay, how do I reach out to 
the general population who, you know, had I done these things when I was younger, I don't think I would have had autoimmune diseases because I was living the sad life and I was on autopilot. I was in chronic stress just being the mom, just being the professional, just living the standard American life. And I was in such, it was just my normal. And I think that that's the point is it's probably your normal too, because the more people I talk to, the more people who hear my story and the more people who tell me their story, we all have one, right? We all have a story. But the common thread is we don't have the tools to be able to thrive just in a day-to-day -day fashion. Our media, our technology, our um, education system, our healthcare system, all of our society runs for immediate gratification. Um, you do it because that's what everybody's doing. Uh, it's autopilot. It is autopilot. And um, so this tool, the Living Well Lifestyle Daily Playbook, I decided to call it a daily playbook um, because, like I said, this has been in the making for years, just like everything. It's kind of just morphed on my journey. And um, I realized that this needs to be, uh, it, it's, a, it's a synthesis of a lot of different tools and um, information that I've gleaned throughout my transformation journey. Um, for your information, this, this process started 10 years ago. I'm, it's been a decade for me from the first time, uh, it was about this time uh, 10 years ago when I was looking in the mirror and looking at my family and looking at uh, a milestone birthday 40 and thinking uh, I am definitely on track for and at that time I had the, the rheumatoid arthritis but I was really worried about diabetes and heart disease because of our family history and um, so 10 years later I'm thriving I'm down uh, I'm still down 70 pounds I've kept it off um, it's bumped and down and you know but within five ten pounds um, so I'm back down where I was and where I have been for the past seven years. It took me about meh, three years to go from 200 down. Um, but over those 10 years, I've done a lot of learning and I've done a lot of transforming. And my lifestyle doesn't look anything like it did. And my health doesn't look anything like it did. I have so much vitality and energy, and I'm still human, and it's not perfect. But I'm, I'm just, I, I want to give you that hope, and the hope is not enough. So now I wanna give you the tools, okay? Um, like I said, this is a synthesis of many different things that I've learned in my journey, that I've implemented. Um, I've kind of taken the things that work and threw out some things that didn't. I'm a busy mom, I'm a busy professional. Um, I'm back to owning my own business. Uh, I had sold my practice after my diagnosis because I knew I needed to do something with my lifestyle. But now I'm back and I don't just have one business. I actually have three. <laughs> so I'm running three businesses um, and thriving. And uh, it's just, it's mind blowing to me that I am where I am today as I'm going into my 50th birthday, um, which leads me real quick to say, if you are somewhere in the United States, uh, this year, we are, my husband and I, are traveling to all 50 states to honor our 50 and 50. We both turned 50, and we have 30 years of, of marriage to celebrate. And so we're gonna do that across the nation. We have four different trips planned, and um, I would love to bring my story to you and your community. If you feel like you have um, people around you who need that hope and who need those tools and who need to, to be supported, um, we have the, the Rise to Shine community, which is the rise to shine life. that's my website, that I would love to come and speak at your, um, in your community and um, bring my knowledge and my hope and my tools to be able to thrive so that um, we can, can get out of this sad pattern. It's just destructive. And 
it's it's leading to a lot of problems in our society um, just because we're not intentional, we're not mindful, okay? So, um, sounds a little cliche, but it's true. And sometimes uh, the things that, we don't always do the things we know, but hopefully um, this will make it easy for you so that you can choose to do that, okay? So, let me just look here and see. Um, yeah. So basically, the book led to the Change Your Story presentations. The Change Your Story presentations led to the Living Wild Lifestyle, okay? So that's the name of the lifestyle program that I've developed that integrates um, the different tenets that I've learned um, and that support us. And probably the biggest, so two things that I want to go over real quick. We talked about diet, right? Diet is foundational. And with the Living Wild program, I don't, I don't, necessarily say you have to eat this way because different people's bodies and chemistries physiology is different our activity levels are different our composition are, is different our heritage is different so we are made to eat different things we're not all made to eat the same thing now what is in common among every single person on this planet is we are made to eat whole foods we are not made to eat what i call franken foods we are not made to eat things that come from factories. We are made to eat things that come from the earth. Okay. So the reason I say I don't, I don't support any one particular lifestyle is because I think that there are, there's value and depending on who you are. So you may be someone who does really well on the paleo diet. You may be someone who does really well on a vegan diet, vegetarian, keto, um, plant-based whole food. That's what I, um, personally eat because I, Meat is inflammatory to me, especially um, you know pork and, and beef. I do eat meat. Um, I love fish. I, I love meat, <laughs> but I, I love fish. Um, turkey is less inflammatory. Um, you know it just it depends. So for me, what is most important in living well is that it's whole, that it comes as close to the earth as you can get it. Uh, I want you to do the least amount possible to the best quality food possible, okay? So if it comes from the ground, eat it raw or, you know, toss it with some um, good healthy fats, um, throw in some, some protein, okay? There's a lot, and, and I'm not going to go into a lot of the diet stuff here because as this year is going to um, unfold, I'm going to do more webinars and more really focused training. So today the training is on the playbook, but you need to kind of understand some of the backstory of living well before you know how to implement the playbook, right? So, but just to know that um, the whole foods is what matters. And you need to have, again, no matter what diet, you have to have a lot of veg. Vegetables and fruit, plants, okay? Plants are the only place that you can get antioxidants, phytonutrients, um, the micronutrients that support your cellular health. You can get your macros from anywhere, your fat, your protein, um, your sugars. Those things come from the macros, but you can only get the micros that take out the oxidative stress, take out the free radical damage at your cellular level. The only place you can get it. And people try to get it through synthetic vitamins and supplements. They're like, oh, I know I need a lot of vitamin C. Oh, I know I need a lot of vitamin E. Oh, and so they try to synthesize it or they're, oh, let's take this multivitamin. Your body doesn't know what to do with that. It's from a factory. They're isolated. You have to have whole foods to have the synergy of all of the different thousands and millions of interactions at the chemical level in your food, okay? So for living well, it's not about low fat, high fat, high carb, low carb, bleh, okay? It's about whole, clean, as, as close to the source from the earth as you can get it, okay? Organic. I happen to grow tower gardens, which we say are better than organic because we don't have um, all of the, the toxins from the soil. Um, we just have the, the um, nutrients to grow the plants. Again, if you follow my Cali Ray 
Um, we have Stonehouse Gardens. Um, you'll, you can see some of those, um, the aeroponic gardening and the tower garden. So however you get it, I don't care how you get it, just get it. Get lots and lots of produce in your diet, lots of plants, eat more plants, okay? Um, and then if you're eating good quality meats, you're eating good quality whole grains that are, um, you know, ancient grains, non-GMO, um, those kinds of things. If your body can tolerate that, good on you. That's, that's fantastic, okay? You're gonna know. The point of living well is living true to yourself. And that's what the playbook is going to help you determine. The, the playbook is going to help you be able to tune in and listen to your, 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 I call it your voice of truth, your spirit. Because your voice of truth will never, ever lie to you or lead you wrong. If you're hearing those tapes in there, that's, that's not your truth. That's the sad life. That's the, the things that have been put upon you. Um, by the by society by um families talk you know i mean just there's all sorts of places where those tapes come from but they're not coming from your truth okay so that's what we'll go ahead and jump in here the second part so the first part is diet for sure <coughs> excuse me still getting over that bronchitis but i've, I've kicked it um so you're Diet is number one, and you've got to have that as a foundation, but it's not enough. You can't just go, oh, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my diet, I'm going to lose weight, and everything's going to be better, because it's not. You're going to put the weight back on, and, it's, and you're going to progress down the disease process because you're not getting rid of um, the, the environmental, the spiritual, and the emotional, um, and the rest of the physical components that are you, that are your lifestyle. There's some really interesting research that is starting to come out more and more and more. Um, that con I, I went to a conference in October and um, was pleased to, was honored to hear Dr. David Katz. And wow, as he presented his um, presentation, I'm like, there's living wow. His whole presentation was a meta study um, looking at different um, research studies across all these different kinds of diets, and they all lost weight. Well, the reason they all lost weight is because they were paying attention to what they were eating, and they were moving more, okay? So all of them, and even if they weren't moving more, they were paying attention to what they were eating, and so what they found was they all worked to some degree. But what really mattered was the lifestyle. That's what gives you extra years of life. And I would argue, not only give you extra years of life, but give you extra quality of life. That's the point, people. It's not about how long we live, it's how we live. Because I can tell you what, when you are hurting and you, are, you have so much fatigue and pain that you can't get out of bed to walk 10 feet to the bathroom, that's not living at all. That is barely surviving. And, and I've been there. And that's why um, I am so passionate about bringing this to you. Um, because again, whether you have autoimmune diseases or not, that was my situation. That's why I had that fatigue. That's why I had that pain. Um, but there's a lot of people who don't yet. I had, that I had the disease for 11 years before I had the diagnosis. So you may be walking around just feeling like crap. They can't figure out why. And everybody thinks you're crazy. And you think you're crazy because they can't find it in your blood. Autoimmune is really interesting, okay? So, on to the playbook. Uh, it's broken into, so it starts out with the uh, rationale, which I already uh, told you, but I'll say it again. Purpose. Uh, purpose. The Living Wild Daily Playbook is a tool developed for you to implement the structure and intention into your daily routines to set and restore your entire being every single day. That's on the first page. Um, I'm sending it to you as an e-file. So first page. And then um, the rationale kind of goes into what I just talked to you about, kind of the back story of how it came to be. And then we'll go into how to use it. So. Um, the, the biggest thing is you're going to notice, and I'm going to share my screen with you real quick, but um, I'm going to show you the paper version, and then I'll show you the screen version so we can look at it closer. So um, there's two pages. There's a left page and a right page. 
And the left page is your morning and the um, right page is your afternoon. So it's, it's kind of a journal, kind of a planner, not really. <laughs> That's why I called it a playbook. Um, it, it has components of these different things. So I'm gonna share my screen with you real quick so that you can Okay, this is what it looks like. And hopefully you have your copy, but if not, that's fine. Just um, subscribe to rise to shine life. And uh, I will send you this playbook for free my gift to you. So on power up, just what it sounds like. Okay, we have, you'll notice here, power up, get my cursor, power up, and power down. So, what I personally do and what I recommend uh, is what I call power hour. I have my power hour in the morning and then I realized, hey, I need to power hour at night as well. Uh, and so, I replicated it. In the morning, it's 20 minutes of workout, 20 minutes of meditation, and 20 minutes of study. And then if you write what you do, because sometimes it's different. So for years, my workout was yoga. So I would literally roll out of bed onto the mat and I would do my yoga. And then um, as I learned more and as I started implementing more and more, I started doing meditation. And my meditation would be whenever I could fit it in. And then study, I do a lot of personal study and professional growth. Um, just across the board. I, I have a pretty insatiable um, learning appetite. And so I study throughout the day. So what I found was if I, you know, it's, it's hard to get that fit in and you get to the end of your day and you collapse into bed and you're just kind of like, well, crap, I didn't get the things that I wanted to get done today. I still didn't get my workout in or all I did was my um, yoga, but I didn't get to meditate today or whatever. So what I found is if I put it first thing in the morning and I make it a chunk, instead of each individual thing and then having it fall out, uh, I do the chunk. So it's an hour chunk and 20 minutes of each, okay? So this is what I call power up in the morning. Just like we turn on our electronics and they have to power up and they have to reboot and sync. And I keep getting this darned pop up down here. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, the more I talk, the more my, my voice is going to croak out on me. Um, so I recommend writing what you do. That's why I put the, the lines here um, for you to just keep track. What workout did you do this morning for 20 minutes? Um, you know, what, what yoga, what stretching, what um, cardio, what strength, whatever. Whatever fits you. And again, that's the, the wow lifestyle is your lifestyle. The sad lifestyle is society's lifestyle. And so what we wanna do is we wanna claim it back. We wanna say, okay, this is what I intend to do. And these are the things I choose to do. They feel good to me. These are the foods that, fit, that make my body have energy and fuel me and feel good. These are the workouts that I enjoy. They're not boring to me. I like to move my body this way, okay? Um, I like guided meditation. I like prayer. I like um, to go sit in the mountains or down at the beach for 20 minutes, whatever, okay? Everybody's meditation might look different too. Um, and study, what are you studying? Is it something spiritual? Is it something personal? Is it something professional? I will say that my study here tends to be more of a spiritual nature, of a personal nature, some, a skill I'm trying to develop or, or maybe a, um, an attribute I'm trying to focus on. Um, my professional study I tend to do in my work day. I try to, to you know, have my wow time and then have my business time. So when I have study here, occasionally I'll do some business study in there, but usually it's more personal for me. Um, you can set it up how you want to, but it helps me balance. So you've got 20 minutes of those activities and 20 minutes is not very much, but it's enough. It's enough to really get you centered, okay? During that time, while you're in that power hour, you're going you're gonna to have some inspiration. You're going to hear 
some thoughts that are going to percolate to the top and you probably haven't heard them at other times because there's so much noise coming in from the world. There's so much stimulation coming in from your screens. There's so much noise coming in from outside um, factors that you really don't hear your inner inspiration in your voice, okay? And so during this power hour where it's just you and you're focused on your body, your mind, and your spirit, you're going to hear some things that are going to surface. And that's what you're going to put there under that morning inspiration right here, okay? Those things that come to your mind and, and trust me, <laughs> Those things are going to come up and you're not going to have a pen handy and you're going to think, oh, I'll just write it down later. You will forget it. Okay. You will forget it. So have your playbook with you when, have it beside you when you do your power hour so that as that inspiration comes, you can write it down. Okay. I also use my voice notes app in my phone a lot. Um, if I'm not in a situation where I can write, um, I will record it and then I can come back and listen to it. But somehow you need to capture that inspiration because again, when the volume of the world turns up, you're going to lose that inspiration. You'll, you think you won't, but you will. I promise you will. So get it written down. Okay. There's also um, a lot of this playbook I've been doing digitally for several years, but there's power in writing. It's a kinesthetic connection between our hand and our brain. This, this motoric writing solidifies these, this intention and makes it more um, solid. And so I really, uh, if you have to do it somehow, you want to do it, uh, I don't care how you do it, but I do have the digital and the, um, the ability to print this because I want you to be able to write it down because you'll find that there's more power in the written um, practice. Your morning affirmation is something that you, again, we have so much coming in from the outside world. And so your morning affirmation is an intention for you to set for the day your truth, okay? Um, I use an example in the, in the written book uh, for um, I am enough, okay? I am enough. Um, generally, this morning affirmation, you want it to be I am fill in the blank. But if this is something you're struggling with, you're not really familiar with affirmations, um, you, may, you may already have your affirmations, plug it in. Um, but if you're not, I am enough is a great one to start with. And um, sometimes you will have, um, you may not feel like your affirmation is true to you, like it's something you want, but you really don't feel like it's you. Um, and I would challenge you, if you feel that, write it down and write it down in the I am speak your truth because it is your truth. It's just been so suppressed. It's been so put down that uh, you're, you're not believing it. But my, my experience is as you take those layers off of that sad onion and you start to get down to the core of your heart and your truth, you will find that those affirmations are true to you, okay? So saying them, writing them, will help you reconnect with your truth. I call it remembering who you were born to be. Think back to where you were your true self before you were told, in, in my uh, example, for me, I am very high, strong, wild, happy, outgoing, loud person. And um, I have older siblings. There's a big age gap between me and my siblings. Um, and I've always been, you know, I was too much. It was, it's Callie, settle down, be quiet, um, calm down, go away, <laughs> you know, whatever. It was just, I was too much. And so um, I had to think way back to how far back. For me to get back to feeling comfortable with my true voice and being my loud and crazy self because it's it's not okay in my family it's not okay in our culture um you know it's it's not responsible respectable professional blah 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 okay so you might have to do a little work um and that's what this playbook gives you the the tool 
to work through some of this, okay? Um, so your morning affirmation. Again, we can talk about that um, more if you're having, uh, if, if you're struggling with that piece of it, the morning inspiration or the morning affirmation, um, we can do more training on that later. Um, I have a spot here for juice plus water and fuel. Again, this is the morning. You've got to fuel your machine. And I know of no better way to get quality, clean produce in your body than Juice Plus. Um, that's what I use. It's in my tools. Uh, it is unparalleled in quality. And if you currently take your Juice Plus, this is where you're going to check. Um, or you might write what it is you took. Um, probably a trio or the quad. Um, maybe, yeah. So I would probably just check because, yep, I did it. Um, water, how many ounces? Uh, and that's the first thing I do. I roll out of bed, drink my water, and start my workout. And so, and then how much water with my juice plus? So I'm going to put how much morning water um, I've had. And then fuel. What am I having for breakfast? Okay. Um, and again, maybe it's a shake. Maybe it's a smoothie. Um, maybe it's eggs. You know, maybe it's huevos rancheros today. Um, as whatever. Um, so. It just depends on what you're eating. Um, but, but again, put it down because it's awareness and you can start to see patterns. And if you, you know, you're gonna want to write down green drink as opposed to McMuffin. It's, it's an awareness. So if you've done these things and you get, out and you know the kids are going to school and everything's crazy and you're like crap i didn't eat yet and you're going to the grocery store or you're going to um, the store and so you decide i'm going to stop at mcdonald's well if you've already done your power hour you've fueled up and and you've made that decision so that you're not on autopilot you can make a better choice because that's what you want to make because it makes you feel great to put the best fuel in your machine. So do that, okay? Write it down. You can't change something you're not aware of. And, and that's super um, important, okay? You can't change something you're not aware of. And that's what the tool, that's what the playbook does, is it helps increase your awareness, and then it helps you in, put intention into your day so that you're then, already mindful of your choices you're making as you make them instead of, oh, this happened, I have to do this. This happened, I have to do that. This happened, I have to do that. And very reactive. The sad life is very, very reactive. Okay. The next thing you're going to do, uh, which this, this may take some practice as well, but see down here how you've got today's top priorities. I want you to take three things so take that to-do list of 97 things. I know, I have one too. You should see my to-do list today. You should see my office and my house because we need to take down Christmas and we need to put everything away. <coughs> so we're going to, uh, I still, even though I've got a horrendous list of things to do today, I have my three things, okay? And so I look and I say, what are my top three priorities? And I'm gonna pull mine up here for today. Um, I always, what worked for me was to break it into three, okay? One that's personal, rather than having three that are all just random, I intentionally have one that's personal, one that's family, and one that's business or other. You may not have a business like I do, so it would be other or work or whatever, okay? But personal, family, and business slash other. And one thing in each category. Now, here's the key. What is the one thing that if you do it today, all those other things will fall into place? It's really the end result. What do you want to accomplish today? Again, this is wow. This is not sad. Sad is going to be read your emails, listen to your voice messages, um, go to 
all these different meetings, do all of these things that are put upon you. But you get to the end of the day and you're like, I didn't do what I wanted to do. Maybe you wanted to spend more time with your significant other. Maybe you wanted to have some quality time with your kids. Maybe you have a big project at work that you're trying to um, accomplish and you're having a hard time doing it because you just have so many interruptions in your day. Um, maybe it's that getting your power hour in. I, a lot of times that's my personal goal is to get both of my power hours, my power up and my power down. Make them a priority. That's the one thing. And if I get those things done, the other things fall into place or they fall out because they're either not important, it's somebody else's agenda, or you can delegate it to someone else. It's not something you have to do. So these top three priorities, it's yours. It's something you have to do and only you can do. And it's something that matters to you because this is where we get the empowerment. We get disease when we're out of balance. And I don't even like the word balance because life is not balanced. Life's a dance. Life's an adventure. Okay. So we're always out of balance, but, but it should be in flow. And if, if you're on other people's agendas and you're not accomplishing anything, you don't feel like you matter. You don't have your worth and your value. And that's going to put you in that dis-ease. Okay. Because your truth knows that you have value, but you're not able to share that value because you're so busy that you can't get anything done. So your top three priorities today, it's gonna to be done today when you put your head on the pillow and all of the other to-dos are leading up to that. So for example, my to-do today for um, my family is put away Christmas decorations, um, clean and organized for 2019. So as we, as we get all of our, we have our Christmas decorations, kind of Christmas is a big deal at our house. Been really weird this year, but we still had all of the stuff out. So as all that gets put away, everything coming behind it will automatically clean, will automatically organize, and will automatically have that, that reset so that we can go into 2019. So the biggest thing for me today is to get the Christmas put away, because if I do that, all the other things are gonna happen. And there may be parts of that that I don't have to do because I can't do everything. I don't have time. So I'll delegate some to my husband, delegate some to my daughter, and we'll all pitch in and we'll get it done. That's why it's the family goal today, okay? Hopefully that's clear. Again, we're gonna write down what food, what water, what fitness. What do I wanna do today? Um, I actually said I wanna go for a walk. Um, I, it's really sunny and beautiful today. It's cold because it's January 1st um, and I'm in Idaho, so it's cold, but I want to get out and bundle up and go for a walk sometime today. And that's, that's my fitness goal for the day. Okay. So have your food goal, your fitness goal, and your water goal. How many, um, how many ounces of water should be? The rule of thumb is half your body weight in ounces. That's a good place to start if you're um, highly active, you'll want to have more than that. Um, if you are overweight and trying to shed some toxicity, you'll want more than that, okay? But that's a, a baseline, is half your body weight in ounces of water as a baseline, as a minimum, okay? And again, I've got some great nutrition and diet and lifestyle things um, that are specific to diet um, that you can get at another time. But this is just showing you how to integrate it into the tool, okay? And then the BHAG. Everybody's like, what is a BHAG? <laughs> that sounds terrible. I love it. Uh, it is a big, hairy, audacious goal. And I picked that up somewhere in my personal, or my professional, personal and professional development. I've seen it in several places, several different um, experts use it. Um, but BHAG is your big, hairy, audacious goal, and I want you to write it down. I love the name because I love that it gives you permission to be a little crazy, uh, to be a little over the top on what you're accomplishing. This is not what I want to do today, okay? This is what you want to do long term, okay? For us this year, we're doing all 50 states in, 50 in, in this year, the year we turn 50. That's a pretty big, hairy, audacious goal. 
And we don't have all of the pieces and parts in place for how that's going to happen. Um, I give the example in the written um, playbook of um, it's kind of that uh, bird's eye perspective. So when you're flying in an airplane, you you don't necessarily know where you're going. I mean, you know where you're going. You have your destination. It's on your ticket, right? But when you're flying, you can't see it. And uh, so that's use that as a visual for your BHAG. It should be something you know where you're going, but you don't necessarily have all of the steps as you get there. So they kind of come together day by day by day. And so your top priorities here should support your BHAG. Okay, um, that is another way to help you figure out what's the top priority. It should support your BHAG. And um, <clears throat> as you, okay, so back to that airplane analogy. Um, so let's say I'm gonna go to New York City and I live in Idaho. So it's usually at least two um, and maybe three or four, depending on the flights, the um, carriers, um, the time of year. So um, I've got several different stops, layovers. Um, I have kind of an itinerary. It'll tell me where I'm going. But again, I can't see Las Vegas from here. But I know I have to go to Las Vegas and then Minneapolis and then New York. Okay. So I have that path, that itinerary. But I have to go through security. I have to go find which gate I have to go to. I have to find out. Um, you know, depending on which airline, how they board, um, when do I need to be there, um, you know, in the secure zone, where am I eating, what am I eating, all these little micro decisions that go into me getting to New York City. And that's kind of what your BHAG is. BHAG is New York City, and your top priorities are those steps that you have to take. And by the time I get to New York City, I get there, I'm like, well, and as I'm flying in, I can see the lights, right? And maybe it's, maybe it's night. And so I see the lights and I'm like, oh, there's New York City. But it's a sea of lights on the East Coast. So I don't know which one is New York City until we start coming in and descending for the land. So as you get closer and closer to your BHAG, it will come into focus. Um, and you'll, you'll know um, what steps you need to do. But right now, that type pri top priority is what do I have to do today? that will support my BHAG that may be a year away, three years away, five years away, okay? Big, hairy, audacious goal. Big. This is your permission to dream big, okay? Which again, is not allowed in the sad life. We are not allowed to dream. We are only allowed to be realistic and reasonable, okay? So, you've got your power up. This is your morning, and I would suggest that you integrate the top priorities and the and the um, the journaling of the food and the BHAG. All those, all of that is in your power hour in the morning. That's your power up. Um, I found for me this is the the order that works the best. It's the order that helps me be able to um, be consistent to do it every single day. Um, I was starting with my meditation, and I wouldn't get out of bed so that I wasn't doing my workout. So um, I started with the workout, that gets the blood flowing, then I can meditate. I also found I have to do it before my family gets up because it's hard for me to work out and meditate with dogs and cats and kids and husbands all um, wanting to be a part of what I'm doing. <laughs> and so um, I started getting up an hour earlier so that I am finishing up my study when everybody else is getting ready to, to get together for our morning family time. That's what works for me. So I've integrated it all into my morning routine. If I wait, it doesn't happen. <coughs> Excuse me. So now to power down. An hour in the evening. An hour that you set aside Again, hopefully you're able to have some time uh, to reflect for yourself. This time is so, so important because again, it's keeping 
it, it's keeping you in tune with your mind. It's helping you set those intentions and reset that tape. The tape of sad is so negative and automatic. And so we want to set a tape that is intentional and optimistic and positive and hopeful with wow, right? And so the way we do that is by reviewing the day, reporting on what happened. And I love doing this. And again, it takes five minutes. But the process, I want you to take an hour. Ideally, if you can do 20 minutes to review, 20 minutes to report, and 20 minutes to restore. <coughs> the 20 minutes to restore, obviously, um, that's overnight. So it's not truly a 20 minutes. But I just find if you can set aside that time, you're much, much more successful. You're more likely to do it. Some people call it journaling, gratitude journaling, um, intention, mindfulness, whatever. This is what um, I've put into the playbook. Review. This is looking back. What one thing did I do well today? What was the funniest thing I did today? And the most memorable thing. I love those questions because they really make you reflect on the day. And sometimes I'm like, I, I didn't have anything funny today. It wasn't a funny day. <laughs> you know, but you can, when you're looking for it, you can find it. And what that does is it helps you go in and find the positive and pull it out. Because what do we do? It's our human nature. Somebody cuts us off. Um, somebody says something that we take that uh, hurts our feelings. And we tend to ruminate on those things. We'll replay that tape 97 million times, right? I can tell you uh, in the month of December, I've replayed the events of the trauma and the emotion and everything a bazillion times. Our mind is amazing. And so it'll just sit there and focus. It'll find something and it'll just replay, 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 loop. And so what this does is it gives you a way to break the loop and put something else in to tape. And that's really, I have used this so much this week as I've caught myself, well, actually throughout the whole month, I caught myself doing that tape. And I'm like, wait a second, Callie, that's not supporting you. That's not what you want to be ruminating on. And so I would interrupt it and I would think, what do I want to accomplish in 2019? How do I want to get this playbook out to the masses? How do I want to share my message? So then my tape starts going, problem solving, problem solving. How do we share? How do we share? How do we serve? How do we serve? And all of a sudden, the other stuff's gone. So that's what this does. And then what's really cool is because you're doing this before you go to bed, it's resetting that daily tape. And so then when you go to sleep, that's what's on your mind. Instead of the million of worries and negative thoughts that are just automatically processing, you take them, you interrupt them, you throw in some positive, what did, you, what did you do well today? Find it. You, everybody does something well. Everybody. I don't care how bad your day was. There's something you did well. So find that. Think about it. Write it down. Write it down. Kinesthetically puts it in the brain. What was the funniest thing I did today? That gets that humor. It gets that perspective. Just smiling, absolutely just raising the corner of your eyebrows and your, your uh, the corner of your eyebrows, the corner of your um, lips and your eyebrows physiologically changes the chemicals your body produces. Physiological change just by smiling. So when you think about the funniest thing you did, and then you giggle a little more about it, and you write it down, replay in the tape. Now you've got a different tape going, okay? This is all part of neuro reprogramming. And then the most memorable thing about today, what, what was memorable? And some days you might feel like, meh, nothing. There is something memorable about every single day. And you want it to be something memorable that is supportive and in line with your truth, okay? What's your biggest win? What did you win today? What was your biggest win? Something that you've been maybe challenged with, something that's been a project that's been ongoing. Um, maybe it was something... Um, <laughs> Yesterday I, I posted, I had, um, I came home, I, I don't normally work on New Year's Eve, um, but I needed to see a couple of patients. And so I did, and I came home and I was doing my charting and I just kind of sighed, I was kind of exasperated. And I said, all well, my patients right now have strokes. They're all stroke patients. Uh, and 
I see a variety of different patients. And so the fact that I do a lot of neuro and um, right now my entire caseload is stroke patients. And I just had my mom pass away two weeks ago from a stroke. Uh, three weeks ago, she had her stroke, passed away two weeks ago. And then um, my favorite patient, um, we're not supposed to have fa favorites, but she actually reminded me of a lot of my mom. And I've been working with her for almost a year, about 10 months. And she had a massive stroke and passed away, very similar to my mom's situation. So I had this back to back. And I just so I was just like, oh, I'm really tired of this stupid disease. And I really, I, I just feel like I, I just am spent. And so I, I just said, all oh, my patients are stroke patients. And my daughter chimed up and she said, that's great, mom. You're really good with stroke. You know a lot about stroke. And I, it took me back and I went, that's a great perspective. And thank you for giving me that. So that was a big win for me because I realized that my family is listening and they are taking in the, the wow lifestyle. They are reprogramming and they're focusing on finding something positive amongst the negative, you know, amongst this overwhelm and, and frustration that I'm feeling. She was able to point out to me that um, I'm good at it. So it's okay. All right. And then um, today I'm grateful for. Again, focusing on what we're grateful for gives us control, makes us feel empowered and grateful so that we're not feeling like we're victims. That is where hopelessness and depression comes from. Um, our anxiety and depression in our society today is epidemic. And this is why. Because we don't, we don't, we have all that negative tape and we don't have these things um, empowering us and helping us remember our value and our self-worth. We are divine creatures. We are all children of God. And there is no reason for us to feel less than enough. We are divine. So what are we grateful for? I'm grateful for that knowledge. I'm grateful that um, I have that relationship with my Father in Heaven and with my Savior to know that, um, that I'm enough. And, and that I'm grateful for, okay? So what, what are you grateful for? Write it down, that kinesthetic puts it in the brain. And then what are you looking forward to tomorrow? Like I said, when I was reprogramming and thinking, okay, yeah, get rid of that trauma tape. Let's put in, how am I gonna um, train the playbook? What am I looking forward to? I'm looking forward that tomorrow is um, a new year and a new beginning, and I'm gonna get to do a training and share um, how, you know, what, what my purpose and my, uh, the, the tool and how to use it, how to optimize it, how to understand what to do um, so that you can use this. So I was looking forward to that. And so then, and I'm dreaming about it. <laughs> and I'm anxious to get up in the morning and I'm anxious to do what I say. Uh, so I get up and I do my power up, uh, even though it's New Year's morning. Um, what a better time, right? So what are you looking forward to? What's happening tomorrow that you can write down that you're looking forward to? And then this is critical, and I don't want to um, minimize it. This is the restore piece, and, and a lot of this information comes from my, my medical background with, um, with those patients that I was talking about earlier. Um, it, it used to be that my patients coming out of the hospital, their, their schedules would be all jacked up because... In a hospital, you've got lights and, and electronics, beeps, and people coming in and taking your vitals and giving you shots and all throughout day and night. And so it's not uncommon, you know, somebody has an accident and they're in with a brain injury and they come out of the hospital, you know, it, it only takes a couple of days actually, but my patients at that time were um, in the hospital and rehab for months. And so they were really, messed up with their schedules. Um, kind of like a newborn baby, you know, you kind of got to get them on a schedule. And so uh, now what I've found is it's no longer just my patients. It is everyone. It's their families. Um, or they'll tell me I've always been like that. And so what's happened is we have televisions in our bedrooms. We have um, screens that are smaller and smaller. So we take them to bed with us. We have our tablets that we read on, our laptops that we um, social on, our phones that we social on. We have all of these different um, things 
that are stimulating us 24 seven. We have the lights on. It doesn't matter if the sun is down, the lights are on. We have a lot of blue light. And the blue light specifically is what they're finding. Um, it does not, it stimulates our brain. So even if you're one of those people who says, I don't, um, I don't watch the TV, I just have it on for noise. If it's in your bedroom and you have it on for noise, it's still, you're still getting the same effect. So um, I encourage people who need that noise and need that comfort, maybe you live alone um, and you want to have that noise, turn on the radio, okay? And turn on the radio, if you can, there's an old fashioned radio, um, but you know, we all stream iTunes or, Pandora or Spotify or Amazon or whatever, um, we all have music available to us on our devices. So um, try to put it outside of your physical room or at least outside of your sleeping area. If you can create, um, you, you need to create a space that is for rest and restore. Um, REM sleep is when your cells regenerate. So you can't regenerate healthy cells if you're not getting restorative sleep. And I would say um, that is probably the second most critical factor to your physical well-being. And it also goes into your mental and spiritual. So it really overlaps. All of it overlaps. You know, you're one being, but your physical, your, your emotional and spiritual and your uh, mental are, are absolutely, they're intertwined. You can't separate them. But I will tell you, my own experience has been that if my physical is breaking down, it's because something is not right in the emotional and the spiritual, okay? So if you can get the emotional and the spiritual on track, you will have a, a higher likelihood of being able to line up your physical. They, they all go together. So you have to have restorative sleep, quality sleep. And the best way, and I've done this with thousands of people over the past 25 years, is sleep hygiene. So just like you're careful about um, you know, the food that you're eating, you wanna really protect your environment. The only thing that should be happening in your bed is sleep and sex. Otherwise, it's out. No food, no drink, no entertainment, no um, reading. Like you can read, but no electronic reading, okay? So if you're reading a book to go to sleep, that's one thing. Um, but but not stimulating. So um, I put in the playbook to help support that. Electronics off. And generally, the rule of thumb is about an hour before you want to go to bed, start dimming the lights. Start turning off the electronics throughout the house. And get, first of all, get the electronics out of your room, if at all possible. And, um, and I have uh, an example in the playbook. Um, I have done this in, I mean, I understand that it can be challenging in some environments. I have patients who are in rooms with two patients and um, like in an assisted living and they share an apartment. And so they have one bathroom, two beds and a shared living space. And, um, and that shared, so it's basically like a studio apartment with two beds in it or recliner in a bed, whatever. Um, but it's a very, very small space generally. And we're trying to create some sort of a seclusion, um, restorative place where they can start to improve their sleep. And, and it works. It absolutely works, but you have to do it. So um, if you cannot move the electronics out of your room, then at least shut them off completely. Um, but about an hour before you go to bed, just start unwinding. Start, if you're watching TV, turn it over to music. Dim the lights. Um, you know, do your night routine, put on your jammies, brush your teeth, um, all those kinds of things will start to, um, it's so funny, we have a, a pup and um, when she first moved in with us, um, she wasn't quite sure, she hadn't lived inside and so she wasn't sure um, what was going on. And after about a week of my night routine, she goes right into her kennel at night in the bedroom. She goes right into her kennel because she knows that when the night routine starts happening, it's time for bed. <laughs> so if the dog can learn it without any training at all, just incidentally, by your body will certainly learn it. Okay, so start, um, have a, an evening routine that is systematic and that's winding down and letting your body and your brain know, hey, it's time to go into a rest state so that you can restore and build healthy cells. Okay. 
electronics off. Um, it's also the time to, to reflect and have an evening prayer or an evening meditation. It can be a couple of minutes. It can be 20 minutes. It depends on what you want to do. Again, this is your program, but you need to have that time to reconnect with your spirit, okay? And then lights out. As dark as you can handle it, uh, because again, the cells need that restorative time. And that's it, okay? Um, that's, that's power down. Uh, I guarantee that if you can implement those things, you will have a better quality of sleep and you will have more um, fulfillment and empowerment and joy if you implement the playbook. <coughs> I can say that because I've seen it in my patients. I've seen it in my clients. I've seen it in me. And the, the research supports it. So um, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. And I, again, I want to gift this um, playbook to you as a way for you to um, find that inspiration and the determination to be able to transform from the sad life into a wild life because um, it feels so good. And again, it's not about um, how long we live, it's about how well we live. And um, to me, there is nothing supportive about depression and anxiety, about autoimmune diseases, about um, hopelessness and, and fear. And the reality is we live in a world that is so abundant. Our abundance is actually um, creating, our, our, our living in it just autopilot is what's creating a lot of the um, diseases that we are suffering with, um, whether they be physical diseases, whether they be emotional diseases, or whether they be mental health diseases. They are real, and we can turn them around. We absolutely can live well and have the vitality and um, turning back the time, feeling amazing. And yes, we all will pass from this world one day, um, that is part of the process, but I want to make my life on this earth um, as amazing as possible and live as well as possible for as long as possible. And we want to shorten the dying process. <laughs> you know, we don't want it to be 40 years. I hope to be able to do like my mom and make it four days. It was pretty powerful. So uh, that is the training. I hope that you will implement this tool. Um, also, I, I want to caution, uh, again, I think it's part of our sad lifestyle that we feel like we're either failing or we're either uh, succeeding or we're failing and um, we're not good enough and I'm not perfect and I'm too busy. And, and I want to give you permission to, to process. This is a tool to help you make the choices and to implement it. But you know, if, if you forget a day or if you just feel like I can't do everything, I'm just gonna do the morning routine. I, I'm not there on the night routine yet. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's you can only do the night routine and, and you can't figure out the morning routine yet. You've gotta do a little more tweaking. That's okay, it's okay. And you know, it's not about what diet am I gonna be on that's gonna make me lose 30 pounds so I can um, you know, go to this meeting, this, this getaway, this vacation, this class reunion. It's really about your health. It's about you. And it's about if you, if you take care of yourself every day in this lifestyle, then the other things come. And when they do come, you embrace it instead of stress about it, right? And that's, so give yourself some grace, but really allow yourself the, the permission to, to heal yourself, to take time to make the decisions that will support you and will um, bring out your best you. Remember who you were born to be, and you'll find that that voice of truth will get a little bit louder, still always quiet, but you'll be able to hear it because you've got those times where you're listening and you're reflecting. So um, I, I do have other tools and, and um, strategies for 
um, the energy system for the um, for the mental reprogramming um, and certainly for the physical for the diet and and um, intake okay whether that's water exercise the physical and, and food uh, so we will I'll, I'll go into those deeper in that particular thing i'm going to try doing more um, specific webinars but I wanted you to have this overview so that you can then plug in these other tools. So if you're wondering about the tools and I haven't gotten them up, reach out to me. Um, let me know, hey, what do I, how do I deal with this in my mental tape? How do I reset this? Or um, I want more information about whole foods and, and how do you, um, you know, how do you know that they're safe? Or, um, you know, all of these different questions that I get, let me know so that I can then um, do some trainings on that. But I, I am looking forward to the most blessed 2019. I'm looking forward to this. And uh, whenever you are able to view this training, um, know that you can start now. Uh, and you can start at wherever you're at. And that's okay. Uh, it's a process. And we can go as fast or as slow as you want to and as you need to. But what's important is that it's your wow it's your life and you have the control not someone else and you are it's your intention it's your bhag not someone else's okay so um own it um, don't excuse it or minimize it embrace it and know that we are here as a community of rise to shine and um and as a community of living wow so happy new year We'll see you later.